Mrs. S. Shobana is working as Assistant Professor in the Department of English at Sindhi College of Arts and Science, Chennai. She has done a UG in Botany with distinction at SRC Trichy. She has done her MA and MPhil in English Literature under Alagappa University, Karakudi. Now, she is doing a PhD in English under the University of Madras at Queen Mary's College, Chennai. She has attended many workshops and conferences and has presented papers in national and international level. She has more than 10 years of teaching experience in UG and PG in the area of English, environmental science and soft skills. Her research interests are environmental science, public health and hygiene. Welcome to UGC lecture series on public awareness part 4. Before I start today's session, let me give you a small recap of what we saw in the last session. We saw about conservation of soil and the need for it and how we can save our soil. In today's session, we are going to see about conservation of water and rainwater harvesting. Before I go to conservation of water, let me tell you as what water is. Water is a natural resource which is a gift of God. We all know that water cannot be created by us. It is from nature. Water is a natural resource which is found in plenty. We get water from rain, from underground water, from wells, from lakes and ponds and water is also found in the ocean. Once if you start using water lavishly, the water content of the earth will become reduced to zero and we cannot survive without water. The life on earth, whether it be a human being or an animal, without water we cannot live. Our existence is totally dependent on water. So, it is our prime duty to save this water that is called as conservation of water. Next, we move on to rainwater harvesting. Rainwater is got only when there is rain. So, we have to use the proper usage of water and save that rainwater. So, we will now move on to conservation of water. Conserving water is not a new policy which is adapted by human beings. If we take our epics and our ancient texts, we can find out that there are records of water conservation. The people who lived in the earlier times have saved water for future usage. If you take the history of the Indus Valley Civilization about the people who lived at the banks of the river Indus 5000 years ago, they have used the techniques of water conservation to save water for their lives. So, now let me tell you the points which you should keep in your mind to conserve water. Reduce the amount of water used for daily activities. For example, turn off the tap while brushing your teeth to save water. We can save water right from the beginning of our day. Getting from your bed, you straight away go and stand in front of your wash basin with your toothpaste and brush. You just simply turn off the tap and stand there dreaming without bothering about the wastage of water. Slow down the water or take the water in a tumbler or a mug and use. You can save liters of water if you adopt this technique. This is a simple tip which I am giving you. You may be feeling funny when I say this, but every drop of water counts. So, do not waste water. Reuse the rinsing water for house plants. Reuse the water that vegetables are washed into water the plants in your garden or your potted plants. 
always water the plants early in the morning to minimize evaporation. Daily we use vegetables in our houses. The water which is used to wash the vegetables and fruits and even the water which is used to wash the rice and the pulses can be saved, can be taken in a bucket and poured into our pots to water the plants. These water are good sources of nutrient to the plants. You can serve it for two purposes. The water also will not be wasted and the nutrient value in this water from the vegetable also will be adding nutrient to the potted plants. So try to minimize the usage of water by watering them to your plants. While watering plants, water only as rapidly as the soil can absorb the water. Use a drip irrigation system to water more efficiently. See when we water the plants, do not use a hose pipe, just use a bucket of water, take a mug and water the plants. Slowly the soil will absorb the water and let water stand there stagnantly a little amount of water. Do not waste unnecessarily by pouring too much of water. Then by following the drip irrigation method, water will be there in the soil throughout the day. Drip by drip, drop by drop the water will be in the soil. This will help to retain the moisture content of the soil and the roots will be fresh from decay. Look for leaks in the toilets and bathrooms to serve several liters of water a day. See, every time waste a lot of water in our toilets and bathrooms. Again, I ask you to just listen here. Don't feel shy in what I am going to say. Earlier, the flush in the toilets were having only one type of flush that is you have to flush the entire water in the flush tank. Now there are two types of flushes available, half flush and full flush. As per our usage, you can use it in a half way or a full way. So water wastage could be minimized. Then when you take the case of the bathroom also, when you find a pipe leaking, turn your attention towards it. Just do not think uh, we can do it afterwards and leave it halfway done. So daily many liters of water will be wasted by these leakages and you cannot serve the nation by consuming the water in a proper way. Soak the dishes before washing them to reduce water and detergent usage. See all these tips I am giving you regarding your house and water management. So our day starts from our house. If you plan and use water properly inside your house, a lot of water wastage will be minimized. We dump the sink of our kitchen with vessels. If you pour water in a minimal quantity inside the kitchen sink and it will be of use cleaning the vessels quickly without the usage of the detergent powders or dish bars. So the water which is used for rinsing these vessels also will be minimized. So plan ahead and act accordingly. Soak the vessels before itself before washing. Need to drink water, take only as much as you need to avoid wastage. So many people in our country do not even have access to clean drinking water. This is a very important point which we have to bear in mind. When you want to drink only a half tumbler of water, we just fill a full bottle of water and drink some and throw the rest away. Do not waste water in these manners. Think about the people who are turning around the streets here and there begging for water. They are not even able to get a little bit of water to drink whether it is pure water or impure water they are ready to use for their daily lives. So we are in a position to save the water which we have got. So use water properly 
and save water from becoming wasted. Saving precious rainwater is very important. Harvest rainwater from rooftops and use it sustainably to recharge wells to reduce the burden on rivers and lakes. Rainwater harvesting is the next topic which I am going to deal. This is not a difficult task to manage. This is such a simple work. If we follow this, we can save a lot of water. Suppose if you take the case of rainwater harvesting, all you need is rainwater and some mechanism to collect the rainwater from your house rooftops and save them in a proper pit where you can collect the water, the direct rainwater and use it instantly or you can save them for future use. Rainwater harvesting is made mandatory now by the government. The government water board is insisting prominently through the press and media for the urgent need of rainwater harvesting. You have to set up machineries to collect the rainwater in your house itself. Nowadays, we are building our houses without leaving even a single feed space with soil. So, where will the rainwater go inside the soil and how it will reach the underground water? There is no space. So, you have to collect the rainwater from your rooftops and save it underground for future use. Now, the rural local bodies and the town planners are setting up the houses and flats in such a way that rainwater harvesting is perfectly done. The government is not giving proper sanction to such houses where rainwater harvesting is not done. The water connection and the sewage connection is neglected to the houses where rainwater harvesting is not done. So, from this you can understand the importance of rainwater harvesting. When you take back the text from the history, in many places, in many government forts, in museums, rainwater harvesting is planned and done. Overhead tanks are collected to collect the rainwater. See, if you collect rainwater directly when there is a heavy shower of rain in a big vessel or a pot or a bucket, look how clear the water is and this could be used directly for cooking purposes and for washing the clothes. The clothes will be very clean and neat once you use the rainwater for them. Rainwater can be collected and used for various purposes. We simply see that water is uh, going off into the drains. Once when rain is coming overflowing, all the water just rushes in our streets and goes and joins the river and a few days water will be stagnating in front of our houses and then the rainwater will be evaporated. What is the use of rain then? There is no use. So, when there is rain, you have to make the proper use of it, collect the water and use it for future use. Replace chemicals like phenol, strong detergents, shampoo, chemical pesticides and fertilizers used in your home with environment friendly alternatives such as neem and biofertilizers. See, we are using chemicals like phenols for cleaning the bathroom and the toilet and we are using shampoos. Instead of all these things, you can use natural fertilizers like neem and some manure. See, when you use these chemical products, when it is mixed with water and when it is going in the drains or when you are using these waters for the plants, it spoils the soil content and the soil nutrient. Don't use these, buy natural products and use them to save the water. Monitor and control ways going into the drains for preventing water pollution. See, regarding this, I want to tell you about our history, the places of historical importance, Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. Let us meet after a short break.
welcome back after the break. Monitor and control ways going into the drains for preventing water pollution. At this juncture, I want you to tell you regarding the historical important Mohenjo-daro and Harappa, the ruined cities of the country. When you see the history of these ruined cities, it is very shocking to note that underground sewerage systems were found in these two cities. These cities were ruined many thousand years ago, but you can find that proper drains were set up to drain the water and the land was kept neat and clean. The people lived a healthy existence as there were no open drains and the drains were not polluted and there were no, it was not a breeding place for insects and flies. When earlier, before so many years, when the people have made the closed drains and they have used the drains properly, why cannot we do it? You have to monitor the drain and see that the drains are not open and that no wastage is thrown into the drains. When you dump waste into the drains, it will get blocked and water will overflow from the drains and it will spoil your environment and it will be an area prone to infect everyone with diseases. And we can have some record from history that in earlier days, people have dug great rocks as tanks and water has been stored in them and it was used for the travelers to use water for drinking. Look at the people who live in an era where scientific techniques or methods were not into practice. They have used the proper usage of water and lived a healthy life and they have saved our environment for us to live. But we are not using the water properly and we are depleting the water content of the earth. So, try to keep the drains properly maintained. Now, I am going to list out the don'ts which you should not do to deplete the water content. Do not turn your tap on full force, instead maintain a slow flow. See when you open the tap, bear in mind that you are wasting water every time. As per our usage, you have to turn the tap whether you need little amount of water or a large amount of water. Simply talking here and there, opening the tap and without being concentrating on the water which is let out of the tap is a very bad habit. Do not use a shower, instead use a bucket of water for bathing. A 10 minute shower weighs many liters of water as compared to using water from a bucket. When I tell you regarding the shower bath, let me give you a small example. Earlier, the shower heads which were sold in the shops used to let out water at 5 to 10 gallons per minute. Now, new type of shower heads have come into the market which is leaving out only 2.5 gallons per minute with fullest water coverage. So, try to use the shower properly. It is possible to use a bucket of water instead of a shower to reduce the wastage of water. In fact, we enjoy a shower bath, but think about the water level. The water table of the earth will become reduced by our wastage of water in a large scale. Every time, think, are we ready to waste our money? If you use our money constantly, the money will reduce. Likewise, if we use our water lavishly, nothing will be left for us for the future use. So, bear this in mind 
and whenever you open your tab an alarm should strike in your mind bear this in mind and start turning off your tabs as soon as possible after proper usage do not over water garden plants water them only when necessary see simply for name sake we can see many gardeners in many parks and many houses he is a gardener to maintain the garden simply without any consciousness or without thinking about the importance of water they simply water the plants there are various steps which have to be followed while watering the plants whenever you have to water the plants water early in the morning because the moisture content will be maintained if you water the plants in the hot sun the hot water will make the roots to decay and the plant will get spoiled and the water also will be consumed a lot so in order to avoid all these things only water during early in the mornings and see the amount of water which is needed for different types of plants some plants need need a lot of water while the others need only scanty water accordingly know the details of watering and water the plants in this regard i want to tell you regarding our farmers our farmers are the backbone of our civilization farmers should use the water for irrigation in a proper manner to save our water our government is giving free of current to the farmers to let uh, water their plants to their farms as the electricity is given free of cost many farmers don't bother about the water which is let out from their pumps if they spend money they will be very cautious in using the water but as it is got to them free of cost they are unaware of the wastage of water and they are least bothered think whether it is free of cost or not free we have to use water in a proper way because once water is wasted is wasted do not throw waste into toilets because finally it goes into the water bodies many of us have bad habit of throwing the waste in the toilet what is the use the waste papers or the waste things have to be dumped in the garbage pits or dustbin there is a specific place for the waste why you go for wasting the toilets it is a very bad habit don't do this this will also help in spoiling the water do not pollute sources of water or water bodies by throwing waste into them this is the water you or someone else has to drink when i show you this slide you can see how the water of that area is polluted regarding this slide we can talk about water pollution many times awareness have been created among the people regarding water pollution water is a natural resource which have to be saved for the future from where do we get water we get water from rain does it rain daily throughout the year no when rain water flows from the sky it is brought straight down to the ground level it has to be stored and then only it can be used for our future usages when you read the history you can see how our great leaders and how our previous kings have made various steps to save the water they have constructed dams and reservoirs and have dug wells to save the water the dams have been built and reservoirs have been constructed to save the water when it is raining and 
to use the water when there is scanty of water in the environment. This was a proper method of using the water. In those days, people were aware about water, but now we are not cautious about it. In our old forts and museums, you can see the overhead tank or the water storage system. It even now in Delhi, many government officers have been instructed to construct rainwater harvesting in their offices and houses. It is made compulsory. It is an example for the general public to create an awareness of saving water. See, when rain flows from the sky, from where do we get rain first of all? The forests attract the rain and water slowly seeps down into the soil and it is safe. Now, rain is coming where there is soil to save the water. Everywhere in the rural and the urban cities, the ground level is fully accommodated with houses. There is no garden in every house and there are no vacant spaces. So, where will the water be collected for future use? Now, the government has set up many awareness campaigns regarding this water conserving methods to save the water for the future usage. See, when you take a few states like Karnataka, Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh, you can see some earthen pipelines which are baked are taken and many tunnels have been set up to drain the water to, and to transport this water to faraway places where there is scarcity of water. The government is taking all the possible measures to save water and it is implementing the people to conserve water. But it is we people who are not utilizing all the advertisements and the campaigns made by the government and we are not using water properly. Now let me summarize all which we have seen now. The need for water conservation, the importance of rainwater harvesting, the proper usage of water. See, as I said you earlier, why we should conserve water is an important point. There are no more forests. All the forests have been cleared and what will attract the rain clouds? From where these rain clouds are formed, all this we have to bear in mind. We have to plant many trees for them to attract the clouds to bring rain. Once it rains, the rainwater just rushes over our streets and roads and stagnates for a few days and finally without any use for anyone it joins the ocean. Then when I tell you about the ocean, the government is taking all possible steps to recycle the water and make desalining of water that is the salt content of the water is being removed and it is made into usage for the general public. Nowadays in many houses and flats, the water recycle method is followed. The water let out from the bathrooms or the water let out from washing the clothes or washing the vessels is purified. It is made to recycle for as proper water for reusage. This will enhance the water content of the soil and the water table will not be depleted. So, the natural resource of water level will be maintained for us to use for the future. The importance of rainwater harvesting. As I told you earlier, rain comes only rarely. Regarding this, I give you one small example. The Chirapunji Hills, which is a rich area where you get abundant supply of rainfall but there there is no proper method to save the water the rain water so the water is getting wasted and now the area is not as earlier it has become a dry area 
But when you look at other areas, they are saving the water and the area is rich in vegetation and flora and fauna. So bear in mind that we have to use the opportunity which is given to us. Whenever there is rain water, whenever there is natural resource of water, use it. Our earlier kings, our old kings, they have dug wells and ponds in many areas earlier. Those ponds and lakes are not seen now. Where are those ponds and lakes? Human habitation has cleared all those ponds and lakes. We are responsible for saving those ponds and lakes, but we are the ones who are spoiling them and habitating the earth's environment. Bear in mind that if you are not going to save the water anymore, there will be no more water left for us even to drink. The proper usage of water as I listed you, which you have to start from your house, will help you a lot in saving a lot of water. Every drop of water counts. So bear in mind all these points and try to save water. Water conservation is an important act. This is the need of the hour. You take a pledge, you take a determination that from now onwards you will not waste water, instead you will conserve water and instinct the minds of others also to do this and you can save water and motivate others also regarding this. Now, here are a few questions which I am going to pose you. Why should water be conserved? How can we save water from being wasted? What is the use of rainwater harvesting? Explain the proper usage of water in our day to day activities. So, with this, I conclude this session by asking you to understand the importance of water which is a natural resource. We should not waste this water. On the other hand, use water properly. We need not take severe steps to save water. Simple things we can do to promote saving the water and conserving water for our future use. Thank you. Thank you.